Hello everyone, welcome back to the Zach F1 channel and in today's episode I have another F1 fantasy video out for you, of course for the Singapore Grand Prix. But before we get into that, let's have a look at how well my team did last week and we finished off with 250 points, a little bit disappointing considering two laps earlier we were looking much better however this is how these things go sometimes and we just have to move on it was quite unlucky to have that tangle but still a decent amount of points still happy with all of my decisions that i made that weekend but anyway hope you all enjoy this video like and subscribe if you get any use out of it or if you enjoy the content follow me on twitter and join my discord thank you so much enjoy the video so the first thing we need to mention again like Zanvoort, like hungary like a few other races i've mentioned before normally qualifying doesn't really matter too much in f1 fantasy of course for your cheap drivers it's normally better to start further back and then your premium drivers of course it's better if they either start at the front or completely at the back as well. However, going into Singapore, we know it's a street track where you don't get too many overtakes. Qualifying is going to be very important. So you're gonna want the driver on pole position. You're gonna want your second premium driver to be the person in second place, because even if we have an instance where like last weekend, Norris started 15th, technically 17th, it's gonna be a lot harder for them to get up and potentially they could only get up to like eighth or seventh, potentially not even with fastest lap. So the way your team will work will be slightly different this weekend. However, Funnily enough, most of the assets that you've been using the last few weekends still seem to be the best options with this in mind. So first up, let's talk about the McLaren domination. So it really has to be said, of course, Piastri won the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Very well done from him. However, McLaren and Ferrari look like the top dogs. However, we've seen it in Hungary, we've seen it in Zandvoort, we've seen it sort of in Monaco as well, that McLaren are the top dog. When it comes to these street circuits and really small and narrow tracks that you can't really overtake on. So for me, honestly, this weekend, unless we see something drastically different in practice, it's gonna be a McLaren triple asset weekend. And then outside of McLaren, I do expect the rest of the top constructors such as Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull to be battling it out for that final place on the podium but for me yeah 100% without a doubt you have to be bringing in McLaren drivers and themselves as a constructor this weekend so now let's move on to the must buy cheap drivers that you need in your team and for this weekend the top dog really is Alex Albon he is still dirt cheap around 9 million and from what we've seen from Williams the last few weekends they really have quite a bit of pace now it's a slightly different track to what we used to so hopefully if they keep that pace they can qualify well and stick there but only time will tell but from what we've seen in the last two or three races Alex Album is my number one asset and then coming back we've got Kevin Magnussen of course he always does well F on fantasy wise however with the qualifying being the more important of the two I actually would recommend going Hulkenberg instead of Magnussen this weekend so I would go for Hulkenberg he's cheaper and he normally does better at qualifying and then for my final must bring in cheap driver honestly I don't even know if it's controversial to say this anymore but it's got to be Color Pinto at five 5.8 million what a season he is having he's only had two races he scored points in Azerbaijan and if he can do the same in Singapore he is so valuable he's so cheap he's gonna overtake Joe in value soon and Bottas so we'll see what happens with that but for me yeah 100% Hulkenberg, Albon and Colapinto are the top three that you must bring in this weekend if you can and then K-Mag's a close fourth with the honorable mention being fifth which would be Pierre Gasly purely because we've seen him around these sorts of tracks do pretty decent and I think the Alpine does suit these low speed tracks more than those high speed ones that we've had from Monza and Baku so hopefully we see Gasly and Alpine a little bit faster but I believe they should be then for me there's only a few must sell drivers there's a few middle ground drivers like the Salvas if you can't afford anyone else but the must sell drivers have to be Oli Berman of course he's not going to be racing in Singapore K-Mag will take his seat back and then you have the Alpha Tauris. I've really not been impressed with them. They're way too expensive. And considering you have better drivers who are cost the same, like K-Mag, Hulkenberg, even the Alpines, I would say, is better at the minute. And then you have cheaper drivers who are better, such as Alvin and Colapinto. There's no real reason to be going for Daniel Ricciardo or Yuki Tsunoda. Now for the constructors. And again, McLaren is key this weekend. I do believe they will be the top dog, without a doubt, with a massive gap to the next people this weekend. However, then going to the other constructors, I do believe, of course, you only really want to be looking at Mercedes and Ferrari. Red Bull for single premium driver builds, but it's quite late in the season for that. And for me, Mercedes and Ferrari are going to score very 
very similar points here. So I really do think it's a strategy of, of if you have Mercedes, keep with Mercedes. If you have Ferrari, keep with Ferrari. They're going to score very similar points and it's not worth a minus 10 to bring one of the two in this weekend. Now let's talk about the premium drivers you really want to have in your team. And like I've mentioned, my top three, if you couldn't guess, starts off with Lando Norris. He had an incredible recovery drive, scored plenty of points, ended up being not really worth final fixing him out of your team because you only get the race points. However, it closely followed by Biastri. As again, we've seen Stella actually say this now, where if Biastri and Norris are first and second, Biastri will give the position to Norris. So I expect this to happen more often than not. It only didn't happen in Baku because of Norris starting 15th, but I can definitely see this happening in Singapore. So for me, Lando Norris is still the top dog driver for your two times and to have in your team followed by Oscar Piastri. And then we have Charles Leclerc in third place. Honorable mention of Lewis Hamilton as well. He didn't have the best Baku, but again, we've seen he still picks up those F1 fantasy points. But realistically for Singapore, definitely the two premium drivers you really want to have in your team are both the McLaren drivers. However, honorable mention to George Russell if you can't afford these two drivers as they are quite expensive now. They're both premium assets. So if you still want a bit more money to be made, George Russell's the guy you go to as he's still got a lot of leeway to that 25 million barrier. So now let's move on to the team selections that you can use for the Singapore Grand Prix. So the first team that you should be running in F1 Fantasy for the Singapore Grand Prix should look something like this. Now, like you can see, the main three assets, like I can't keep stressing enough in this video, are the McLaren drivers. Of course, I do expect them to be one and two going into Singapore from what we've seen at Zanvor, at Hungary, and all of these tracks that are similar to this. Again, I pick Nico Hulkenberg because in that Haas, he can potentially sometimes get it into the top 10. So when he does, it is worth bringing him in. And again, Alvin and Colapinto have been on a massive good streak with Williams. Now, it's not going to suit their car as good as any other track. But we saw with Albon in Zanvoort that they can still go pretty decently around tracks like this. So I still expect them to put up a decent fight. And again, like I said, normally you want low qualifiers. But in a track like Singapore, you want a potential cheap driver to get into the top 10 and just stick there as it's much harder to overtake. Again, McLaren and Ferrari, the big constructors. Again, McLaren is the main one you have to have in your team. However, with this team, if you don't have enough money or you are using Mercedes, you can switch to a team like this. And this really is the same team because this weekend, I really don't think there's too much of a difference between Ferrari and Mercedes. Unlike Baku, Ferrari should have scored more points. What we saw un until the crash, Ferrari was dominating Mercedes. And that's why I said it was worth the minus 10 to even bring Ferrari over the Mercedes. Mercedes. However, in a track like this, I think it's going to be much closer between Ferrari and Mercedes. So there's not much of a real difference. So it all comes down to which team you had in Baku, as you don't really want to waste the transfer on this. Then if you need a bit more money to make this team, you can change the cheap drivers to look something like this. I would drop Hulkenberg down to Bottas. And if you need a little bit more money, you could also do this. Dropping Albon to Zhou, because yes, now Zhou is more expensive than Bottas. Bottas is the better cheap asset. There's still pretty much dud assets to have in your team. They're just going to score around minus five to five points. Not really worth having in your team. However, when you can fit in the triple McLaren assets, it's 100% worth it. Now let's look at the differential team. So the differential team will consist of the exact same team I just mentioned, just getting rid of Piastri and replacing him with Charles Leclerc. Now, I wouldn't really recommend using this team as I'm a firm believer McLaren will be the big asset to have this weekend. But if you want to go a little bit against the grain and go for someone else, I would stick with Leclerc. He's the one in form, the one looking like he's going to get the most points out of any other team out there bar McLaren. However, again, with this team, you could also drop Hulkenberg down to Bottas and Albon down to Joe if you need a bit more money to fill this up. As yes, you need quite a lot of team value to form a team like this. And then finally, let's go have a look at the budget team. Now, this team will be the budget team as it is your single premium driver approach. If you really don't have that much money going into this F1 Fantasy weekend if you started late or do well for you this season but well, this is how you change it about realistically you just need the highest potential cheap drivers to go up in value and for me that is Gasly, Hulkenberg, Alman, Pinto, and then you have Ferrari for that 1 million increase you could also change McLaren to Mercedes to try to get that 1 million increase but I do think McLaren are such a strong asset to hold in Singapore that Norris and McLaren are no brainers and that has to be your two times but anyway those are all the team selections this weekend it's pretty straightforward forward I think because I don't think there's going to be a real big fight between 
Red Bull, McLaren and Ferrari. I really do think it'll be McLaren followed by everyone else. And then I'll quickly go over any chips that you could use this weekend. And again, say it with me, if it's not a sprint race weekend, we do not use a chip. And again, the same rule applies here. Wildcard, I don't really see any use of a wildcard being used here. Most teams have Lando Norris in. That's the main asset you need to have as your two times. Limitless, again, not a sprint race weekend. Not enough points available. Again, also no overtakes are not really worth it. Autopilot, I can't see anyone else really needing that two times this weekend. No negative probably is the most likely chip of the bunch because Singapore, there's a chance for a few crashes and safety cars, a bit of chaos. However, for me, there's better tracks to use it, such as Brazil. Then extra DRS, again, not enough points on the table because no sprint race weekend. And final fix, I doubt I'll be using any of that. Final fix, only to be used if one of your premium drivers does really badly in qualifying, as I do think it's gonna be a stretch for them to do well in the race. Now, finally, let's go over to my league and give a shout out to the top five. So first up, in first place, we still have Porsche F1 with 4,224 points. Again, a decent weekend for you. You got struck really harshly, again, by the Ferrari downfall. We had the same issues. But again, you keep your first place. Congratulations. Moving up to second place, Enema Deji at 4,178 points, closely followed behind by Leapers 1 on 4,176 points. Congratulations to both of you. That is looking like a very juicy fight. And it also looks like a very decent auto autopilot played by Enema Deji. In fourth place, we have Colt Viet flat out. Congratulations on 4,087 points. Quite a bit of a gap between the top three and the rest now. However, don't give up. You guys can still do very well. And then we have fifth place, Ricard Don't with 4,075 points. Congratulations to all of you. And thank you all so much for joining the league. Remember the 200 pound prize pool available at the end of the season. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Of course, I will be live streaming on the Saturday to help you out with your team selections and i'll also have my post fb2 reaction video up for you guys on friday for f1 fantasy however that will be all of my f1 fantasy content for this week there'll be more f1 content coming out though as well this week but anyway hope you all enjoyed if you enjoyed like and subscribe and i'll see you all later for another f1 video bye bye